Hey guys, what's going on? I know what you're thinking. What is this? Another A's approves? He's gonna slap some static image behind the video and just talk to us for half an hour about bullshit for some game that he likes? And I, I you know, I, got, I can see where you're coming from. But, uh, this time it's gonna be a little bit different. So, uh, by the title, you guys can guess that today we're gonna be discussing Persona 5. And, um, it's good. It's a good game. Uh, the thing, the thing about it, the thing about it, now, now, of course, this, this review is gonna include a lot of spoilers, so don't, don't go into this if you haven't beaten the story. I'm, I'm of course, going to warn you again when I start talking more about spoilers, but just be aware that spoilers are in this video. That being said, let's continue. Um, for the beginning of any game, I think it's important for you to realize the, uh, for them to realize, rather, the, uh, the presentation of the game. And of course, I'm not one who focuses on graphics over gameplay or anything like that, but the graphics in this game are very good. They're, uh, the Catherine game is a game that they were going to use to test out the Persona 5 engine, then, you know, it got delayed to all hell, and we waited five years for it, it got delayed, etc., etc. The, the point is, it is running on probably a more advanced version of the same in engine that they used to make Catherine on. And it looks great. The... Everything, everything looks better than Persona 4. All the models are high res, everything looks very, very nice. And of course, of course, you can't talk about Persona 5 without talking about the UI. Oh my goodness. The UI in this game makes me come. The soundtrack, of course, is also very good. It's, uh... It's filled with a lot of songs. Well, I don't think that the combat music is as memorable as some others. I know a lot of people like the combat music and, you know, haha -ha funny memes about it. But in general, I think the older games had better battle themes. It's not bad by any means. It's just not as memorable, in my opinion. The music when you're walking around town and hanging out with your friends and stuff is all very good. It's a very, it's a very jazzy feel as opposed to Persona 3, who's more like, you know, punk, and Persona 4, who's more like poppy. Uh, Persona 5's soundtrack fits the mood really well. It, it fits the big city, rainy atmosphere, right? Everything in this game looks very good. The uh, It's very nice because this is the first game in the Shin Megami Tensei series, including all spin-offs and such, where we're actually getting new models for the demons since Nocturne, or whatever whatever the first game was to use those models. You know which models I'm talking about. They, use, they reuse those every single time. This is the first game we get to see all the same demons reimagined in, you know, 1080p HD. And they look very good. Uh, so, I mean, really there's not a lot, whole lot for me to say about the graphics and all that stuff. They look good. They're nice. Knives. So moving on next, of course, after the, after the graphics and stuff, I don't put them at the top of the priority list. The most important thing for any game, of course, is the gameplay. So, with Persona 5, you... You pretty much get what you expect, right? In terms of combat and social linking and stuff like that, but there are a lot of upgrades from previous versions, right? For starters, the first thing that really, that I was always getting excited about for this game, that always tipped me off, you know, I was like, oh yeah, this game's gonna be good, is that they scrapped shuffle time. Fuck that shit. I mean, I don't really have a problem with shuffle time, but Demon Negotiation is a lot more unique and a lot more fun. Persona 1 and 2 had them. All the Shin Megami Tensei games have them. I don't know why they got rid of them for 3 and 4. They brought back Demon Negotiation. And that's, for people who don't know, that's when you you talk to a demon and convince it to join your party. I think in this game, they're a bit more forgiving. Because like in Shin Megami Tensei games, they'll ask you for money or items. And take shit from you. And they might not even end up joining your party. Personally, I haven't had that happen in Persona 5 at all, not even once. You either convince them to join your party, they give you an item, or they just don't. 
they just don't join you. And it's as simple as that. But it is really nice to see that system come back. It gives each demon its own personality. Everything feels more genuine. Instead of instead of demons being like, oh hey, you won a battle, here's a here's a prize, something new to summon. It's more like, you know, you actually it's minimal effort, of course, but you put in some effort into capturing these demons, and now you have an option, you know, you say, oh, I don't have one of these yet, I should get that one, instead of relying on luck and chance to be able to pull a demon that you want to complete your compendium. Of course, you can always fuse demons to complete the compendium, but obviously, that's too expensive for some people. Very expensive to do. Now, in terms of combat, it's your standard JRPG fare, right? It's turn-based, they've got weaknesses, and all that, all that good Persona stuff. But, there are some new things as well. A lot of complaints that I see coming from people about Persona 3 and 4's combat is that they dumbed it down. And it's true, they did. Persona 3 had a bit more variety in that aspect. They had the three different types of melee attacks, can't remember what they are, and then they had all the elements as well. And Persona 4 just took it down to one type of physical attack and all the elements as well. Well, Persona 5 kind of is in between with that. They've got physical uh, melee attacks and the gun attacks, or ranged attacks. Those are the two different types of physical damage that you can deal to an opponent. And then there's all the other types of elements that are out there. And they've even, so like, in, in other Shin Megami Tensei games, these exist, but it's new for Persona where the light and dark elements aren't just instant kill moves and that's it. They actually have their own just damaging moves, which is really nice because it, it gives each element much more presence. So there's a lot of a lot of different things that you have to think about now instead of just being ice, wind, fire. Yeah, you get you get what I mean. There, there's very little variety in the older games, and this it, it's not the most variety we've seen in a Shin Megami Tensei game, but for a Persona game, it is certainly a lot. And with the inclusion of Curse and, or sorry, I mean Dark, Dark and Light having their own damaging moves instead of just being instant kill, it's very, it puts them more in the limelight of importance. And it, it's good and great, and I like it, it's good. Um, outside of that, that's, that's really for the most part all the excitement there is. I mean, for boss battles, they kind of introduced this concept in the first boss where, like, you might have to send a party member out to go complete some sort of task. Like, in the first boss, you have to steal his crown, right? And it makes him weaker when his crown is gone. And they said, they presented that as if it were, like, some key mechanic for all boss fights, but... Really, they don't even, they don't utilize it that much. It's in the first boss, the fourth one, and maybe the last one. I'm not sure if there are any other bosses where that's even a thing. It, it only happens sometimes, and it doesn't feel like ever present. It doesn't feel like, okay, here's the boss. I better make sure I'm, I'm ready to do something along those lines because they don't, they don't utilize that enough, I don't think. It is an interesting concept, though, and when it does happen, it's fun. Outside of the combat, you know, you got... All your, all your other shit, your social links, you're increasing your social stats, and you're going to the movies with your buddies, all that stuff. Now, this is the biggest city that the Persona series has ever seen, and that's not an exaggeration. It is legit the biggest. It has the most explorable space, and although it's still tiny because it is a JRPG, you know, they got to... They gotta control you a little bit. It's not like open world or anything like that. But, like, you know, Persona 3, you were in a big city, but it's like... You have four, five areas to go to. And then Persona 4, you have four areas to go to. In this game, the city is fucking huge. There are tons of hangout places for you to go to. If you wanna do a social link and invite somebody to come and... You're, you're not ready to level up the social link, right? You gotta invite them to hang out somewhere. And they have, they give you so many fucking options of where the hell you wanna go. There are so many different places for you to go. I can't even, I'm not, I, I don't even know how many there are. And in terms of explorable areas, you know, places you can go around and do shit, there's four or five, like 
per usual, right? But there's so there's so much to do in these places. You can go you go to the bathhouse, you go to the batting cages, you go watch a movie, you can go to the arcade, you can there's so much shit to do. And it's it's the most set that you've ever been able to do outside of the dungeons in any Persona game thus far. And it's really impressive. It's honestly exciting. And aside from that, of course, the social links themselves, the social links themselves, they feel more important. The, the social links in previous games, if they weren't for your party members, like in Persona 4, if you weren't leveling up your social links with your party members, all you got for leveling up your social link was the ability to summon demons at a more powerful level. And of course, you get the backstory behind those characters, and that's cool, and that's, you know, a staple of the series, but... This... This is different. Almost every single social link that you do, in fact, not even almost, but all of them, have various other buffs. So if it's not one of your party members that you're doing a social link with, they call them confidants in this game, but they're totally social links. Don't let them fool you. If you're not doing a social link with one of your party members and you're just talking to a side character and leveling up that social link, they give you various buffs from them as well like the nurse. You can go to the supermarket and buy healing items for yourself. You don't have to go to the doctor. But if you level up your social link with the doctor, she offers you more items and at a lower price. And if you have her at rank 10, she's giving you all kinds of shit for cheap. And it's a really good buff to have. Mishima, he gives you experience boosts. Sure, you, all, the, all, all these characters have so much more to offer in terms of social link that everything feels more important. Now, with that being said, the game is a lot easier as a result because you have all these social links giving you all these different kinds of buffs and different shit that you can do, the game becomes a lot easier. Especially involving the social link between Caroline and Justine where if you get them to maximum rank, you're allowed to summon personas that are above your own fucking level. That's crazy. That's insane. But... It rewards you for your hard work and, and dedication into maxing out these social links. And of course, if you have every single social link maxed, you're going to be one crazy dude. The only other thing that I can really think to talk about in terms of gameplay um, are the new additions to the Velvet Room. And, you know, you go to the Velvet Room, you fuse demons, you summon them, you make them stronger, all that shit. It's typical fare. <coughs> they, uh, they add... They add a few new things. There's like a guillotine and all these other things that you can do. I didn't really use those elements as much. I just didn't really feel like I needed to. But they are there and it's nice. So like you can sacrifice demons to get items. You can you can do like, you know, you choose one demon to make stronger and then you can put a weaker demon into the stronger demon with all like all those free to play games do these days. It's it's nice that they have so many options. Although I personally never really use them a whole lot. Overall, this game's gameplay is miles above anything else in the rest of the series, and as far as far as the pure gameplay goes, this game ranks number one for me. And of course, it's a JRPG, and it's Persona, so everyone raves about this game's story. From this point forward, there will be a lot of spoilers, and just as a heads up, you know, if you haven't played the game yet, I recommend that you do, because... Spoilers. Um, since it, yeah, since it's a JRPG, the story is also a very important asset of the game. So, how is the story in this game? It's, it's good. The story's good. Personally, I don't find the story to be as engaging as the one in Persona 4. It doesn't really click with me as much, but I can see how some people might like the ideas and concepts more. I didn't really... there. I didn't really get into the story so much until the end of the game where shit started really hitting the fan and it was really, you know, important, like shit was going down. Like that's, that's when I was starting getting really invested. All the, all the building up didn't really have me interested at all. I, I oftentimes even skipped some conversations because I didn't, I didn't care about what they were saying. Like after you beat after you beat a dungeon and everyone's freaking out about, oh, did we actually change his heart or not? Like, I didn't want to read those texts seven times. I skipped some of those. 
but for all the main story cutscenes, obviously, and all the social links, I paid the utmost attention. Um, <clears throat> so the story overall is not that great, but the ending is probably the best ending in the entire series, because pretty much the game starts you out, and the first thing you do is you are the main character, and you get captured by the police, and they're interrogating you, right? And pretty much the whole game plays is you recollecting all the events that happened up to that point. Once you reach that actual point and start moving forward from there, the story really starts to pick itself up. It starts becoming a lot more interesting and things like that. The real icing on the cake, though, the thing that really put this game's ending above all else for me is Igor. Igor, in all the Persona games historically, has just been... I mean, he's an important character, don't get me wrong. He helps you in every game, but he's always just been the guy in the Velvet Room that sits there and summons demons. And, you know, he he's like, oh, he gives you hints and stuff, and he's aware of what's happening, and... He doesn't really do a whole lot, though. He just kind of sits there. And I love Igor. His design, everything about him, he's a very mysterious character. But he they never flesh him out fully. And I wouldn't say that this ending really fleshed out his entire character. He's still a very mysterious person. But from the very moment you start up the game... Well, if at the very moment you first see Igor, I should say. His voice is very deep. And it's strange. It's really strange. The thing is, though, that his deep voice, th th this, really, the thing that got me the most excited is Igor's, l like, his time in the spotlight for this game. It was so good. I had always been wishing for Igor to have a bigger role, and it's fucking amazing. Turns out that the Igor that's been helping you through the whole game, all the way up until the end, is actually the real bad, like, you know how, like, in Persona 4, it's like, oh, yeah, the real bad guy's the dude at the gas station. Right? Yeah, well this time, the real bad guy is fucking Igor. Well, not Igor himself, but an Igor imposter. The Igor that's been helping you through the entire game isn't actually Igor. He's locked Igor away and was manipulating you to destroy the human race. Basically. And so, that's another thing with Morgana. I like Morgana as a character, but... As things went on, and she's like, oh, what am I? Or he, sorry, I always forget that Morgana is a boy. And it's like, oh, what's going on with me? What am I? I can't remember what I am. I thought it was going to be another Teddy situation, right? I thought it was going to be like, oh, I'm just a shadow that gained human emotions, right? And I was, I was, I was ready for that to happen. I wasn't really going to be disappointed if that was the case, but that's what I was expecting. They fucking blew my expectations out of the water by making Morgana... Another denizen of the Velvet Room that Igor created to send out to get help from you. That's fucking crazy. I love, I love Igor's inclusion in this game. And the fact that he finally got more involvement in the story makes me so happy. Although, Igor didn't actually go out and help you do anything. Still very, very, very nice that they made him more important. He had more involvement in the story. That's my favorite part about the story in this game. Of course, though, with as much as I enjoy the story, there are quite a few things that I didn't like about the story. The story's good. There's nothing... Nothing in the game... Nothing in the game's story really feels... terrible. Like, nothing just feels outright shitty. You know what I mean? There's no twists that just come out of nowhere for no reason or anything like that. But there are a few things that I think could have been tweaked. At a certain point in the game, Morgana starts to feel like she's useless after Futaba is introduced and she becomes a navigator and you don't need Morgana anymore. Morgana's like, well, fine. Fuck you guys. I'm clearly useless. I'm going to get the next target on my own. Obviously, Morgana's a dumbass. But... She leaves the party for a certain amount of time. And, you know, I I used Morgana in my party, of course. She's a good healer. But you never feel the impact of Morgana leaving because they don't make you do anything with her when she's gone. Like, she leaves the... He, 
I, I'm so sorry. I keep calling Morgana a girl. It's really an honest-to-God accident, but Morgana is a female name. Anyway, Morgana leaves, and she's gone, and they don't make you do anything without him in your party. They don't... You don't have to do a dungeon or a boss battle or, or anything without him in your party. He's gone. A few, like a half hour of story passes, and he's back. He left and came back so quick that it there was no impact on him leaving. Like, in Final Fantasy IX, they have this part where one of the characters in your party's mothers dies, right? And as a result, she fucking sucks. She can't do any of her spells. Like, half the time her spells don't work. She's off looking in the distance, mourning the death of her mother. And it's like, well, fuck, bitch. I'm sorry your mom died. Like, it's... It's a... It's an, an interesting way to integrate the story into the gameplay. And it makes you feel the impact of these characters' struggles. But if it's just the thing that happens, and then they're back, and nothing's different in such a short amount of time it doesn't it doesn't matter nothing about it it, it it just doesn't you don't feel bad at all so that's one thing I don't like Morgana leaving and coming back so shortly was not cool another thing I don't like is Akechi his whole character I don't like him at all why though he comes into the game and he's like I'm the detective I'm gonna catch the Phantom Thieves I'm cool justice man gonna get you." Right? And... I don't know. He's... He's better as a character that just does that. But... They make him more, of course. He joins your party for the casino. And he helps you fight. And then after that dungeon, he's gone. Because turns out... Another thing I should mention. Another thing I don't... Don't like at all. Before I get into a catchy, let me actually explain something else. The whole interrogation thing does not sit well with me at all. Najima is interrogating you about what you did. And she's she keeps telling you, okay, so this was your next target. So you already know who the boss is going to be. You already know who's the bad guy. That's not fun. There's no investigation. You don't get to figure out who's doing what. She's like, oh yeah, here's, here's the painter. This is the next guy you're going to fight. And then the painter shows up, and you're like, oh, well, there he is. If that wasn't happening, if that wasn't a thing, then I, if the painter showed up, I wouldn't think twice about that guy. But anyway, I don't like the interrogation at all. And I don't like how in the very first cutscene of the game, the guy says, you were betrayed by one of your own. You were sold out by one of your own. That's terrible! Why the fuck would you put that at the beginning of the game? You know what? I said there's nothing terrible about it. That's actually... I hate that. I hate that so much. Why would they say that at the beginning of the game? Why would they tell you that somebody was going to betray you? That ruins the entire shock and suspense of the whole thing. The whole idea of somebody betraying you. Is retarded. I don't know why they put that at the beginning of the game. I'll continue, though, with the catchy. So, at the beginning of the game, the guy says somebody's going to betray you. And, of course, Akechi is the one to do it. And then you find him later in a later dungeon, and you fight him, and he's like, Haha, I'm crazy, I'm going to kill you. It's Akechi's inclusion in that aspect of the game is so bad. I don't like it. It feels like, with Persona 5, they tried to make everything bigger and better than they've ever done before, right? So, like, bigger cities, more shit to do, more social links, more types, of, more things to do in combat, more demons, etc. But, the thing is, in Persona 4, it's like, okay, the guy who betrayed everyone is Adachi. He's the, the side character that everyone loved, and turns out he's the bad guy all along, right? That's, that was genuinely surprising, because Adachi was a side character the whole time. You wouldn't, fuck, you wouldn't expect that guy to have that big of a role, right? You would never expect that. Akechi, side character the whole time, then he joins your team, and it's like, oh, wow, the guy that was on my team is the guy who betrayed me. That's even crazier than it being a side character. But it feels so forced. It feels so forced. Like, they just 
threw it in there to have it because they wanted to make it bigger and better. I don't... Akechi turning against you doesn't feel genuine. I don't understand why he would want to do that. I mean, of course he explains that he's... He hates his dad and he's trying to get back at him and shit and trying to prove himself, right? But it's just dumb. It's just dumb. And if they were going to have it, like if they wanted to make it bigger and better by having it that, oh, oh one of your own party members betrays you this time, right? Why would they choose a catchy? He's obviously the most, like, he's the guy who's like, yep, I'm going to catch the Phantom Thieves. Hey, we should team up. Ha ha, gotcha. Who? Who? What kind of... What kind of idiot is gonna think that Akechi's not the guy that's gonna betray them? Like, really? Akechi... What is that? What is that? I don't understand. If they were gonna do that, they could've chosen a different party member. They could've made Ryuji betray you. Like, that would be shocking! That would be legitimately shocking! He'd be like, well, I'm tired of you guys not milking the Phantom Thieves for all they're worth or something. Right? Like... Why Akechi? Akechi's so obvious. Everybody knows that guy's a douchebag. He's going to betray you. What? It's not surprising at all. It's not a twist. I'm like, oh, well, Akechi betrayed us. Big surprise. I don't... I'm sorry. I've been ripping on Akechi for like five minutes. I don't like his character. Moving on. The only other thing I don't really like is Haru's inclusion into the party. She felt a bit rushed. But I can't really, I can't really say that they rushed her inclusion because, for Christ's sake, this game has been delayed for almost four years now. So like, everything they is clearly deliberate, right? But personally, I don't feel like Haru's story was really as fleshed out as the other characters. Um, that's about all I have to say, really. The game is good. Don't get me wrong. Despite as much as I just shit on the catchy, the game is really, really fun. And the boss designs and everything are really amazing. The combat's great. The dungeons... Oh! I just didn't even talk about the dungeons. The dungeons in this game, right, are more akin to the likes of Persona 1 and 2, where they're actually dungeons. They're not, like, randomly generated floors like Persona 3 and 4. Persona 5, they're actual dungeons. And it's nice. It's nice that we actually have those this time. Another thing about Shido, he is the boss before the final boss, and he, his, his first form, like, he has three forms, right? I don't understand why they did this. His first form is him on top of a giant golden lion made out of corpses. That's fucking cool, dude! And then when you beat that form, the lion starts flying. And then when you beat that form, it's not really a form. It's just when you get him to a certain amount of health, he cha he like the corpses morph. And then he's a giant pyramid made of corpses. That's incredible. But then his second form is just him standing there. And his third form is just him standing there. But now he's buff. Why did they not reverse those roles? Why did they not make him, him standing there, then him standing there buff, and then the golden lion made out of corpses? What's up with that? That was probably the most disappointing boss for me. I, 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 okay, that's not true. I lied. Madarame was pretty disappointing. But I don't understand that decision. Like, why did they make the Golden Lion the first part and not the last part? It doesn't make sense to me. Despite all that, the game is really good. The final boss is incredible. I really like... I really like how they throw... If... If... In all the games... When you max out somebody's social link, it shows, like, the ending of the game, right? It shows all the people whose social links you've maxed out coming to encourage you. And in this game, the shadow world and the real world, whatever, they're mementos, right? They fuse into one, and everyone's freaking out because there's fucking demons everywhere, and it's raining blood, and shit's crazy. And you're fighting the final boss on top of this skyscraper, right? And everybody's cheering for you. And people who have your max social link with you actually put in effort to try and get more people to cheer for you. Because the more people are cheering for you, the more likely you are to take down the final boss. You know how it works in these JRPGs. Friendship is everything, right? It's nice. Really good ending. I feel like this video is getting really long. It's a very good game. If there's anything you guys feel like I didn't talk about, feel free to let me know. And I'll tell you how I feel about it in the comments section. Overall, 
This game gets probably an 8 or a 9 out of 10 from me. It's really good. I still like Persona 4 story better, though. So, unfortunately, it's going to have to come in second place behind Persona 4. The gameplay itself is incredible. It's outstanding, amazing. Yes, I like it. Good. That's all for today. If you guys want to... Follow me, you know, do it, put an end card here, right? If you guys want to follow me on Discord, or follow me on Discord, what am I saying? Join the Discord server so you can talk to me and people who have similar interests, you know, all that good stuff. Join the Discord server, come talk to us. If you want to support me on Patreon, go ahead and do that. Yeah, I just, I wanted to make an Ace Approves video for this game because it's a good game, etc, etc. I like it. It's good. Go check it out. Good game. Persona 5, 9 out of 10, my review on YouTube.com. That's it.